high. So when they say if you break no contact, it gets worse and worse and worse, they really mean that if you break no contact, it gets worse and worse and worse. I'm still learning as we go along here. So I made the era of breaking no contact. And I'm gonna tell you what happened. Because honestly, this was last week and, and I threw it, it was like a five day period. Throughout, I, when it was done, I just wanted to hear from other people going through it. So I'll tell you exactly what happened. 30 seconds or less, and of course then I'll extend it. I went all the way through the weekend, all the way through Valentine's Day, all the way through, over 100 calls, 50 voicemails, same amount of texts, fine. By Monday evening, there was something, I don't know what it was, I have no idea, because I erase everything, I don't keep anything, I don't keep any text history, I don't look back on it. Um, I erase them sometimes as they come in. I read though and I listen to everything. Monday night, I said, I don't know what it was that he said, but I said, I'll text it. I'll give you 10 minutes. You, something like, you obviously need to explain something. I'll give you 10 minutes. That was Monday. By Thursday, he was out of town again because he was staying locally. By Thursday, he's out of town again. And by Saturday, I'm singing Gladys Knight. Neither one of us wants to be the first to say goodbye and crying in my kitchen. So that would be last night. Now, he's still calling. That hasn't stopped. But I don't care. It just, the whole thing felt weird, felt shady. I did not give in to him, but I listened to him. A couple times he came over for coffee, whatever. And I listened to him. This is why they say it gets worse and worse and worse. They're love bombing, or this is one of the reasons, I think, because this is why, what led me to crying in the kitchen. I was just so, <clears throat> it just felt so final to me, finally, because the fact that he could, the love bombing was so thick, and maybe that's why it gets worse and worse and worse. They come in with every single time, whether yours visits you once a month, once every six months, and every time they lay it on thicker and thicker and thicker. And so even if you're not biting, even if you're not giving yourself over to them, which I remained in that capacity, but just listening to it and giving them their few minutes of floor time affects your brain. Because even with all the healing and all of the growth and all of the um, time you've spent away, when you have that person in front of you and that love bombing is that thick, it affects you. Fast forward, so there's Monday through Thursday, right? Fast forward to Thursday, he's back out of town. And let's just say, um, I'm, I'm interested in being my authentic self, but you don't, details are just not even they don't make they don't even matter really so he went to a place that just so you know that's not a where he went is not good so even though we keep no so then I thought to myself oh my god everything's right they never change and even with the thick 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 love bombing going on which is still happening but now I'm going no contact again but I feel effective Saturday night but I feel like where did I do you know what I mean and just a few videos ago I said to you guys don't beat yourself up if you have a bag of potato chips on your diet so even though I remained and didn't let him into my life again and I didn't bite and I didn't give any words back to him I didn't just being here fed his narcissistic supply messed with my brain chemically hearing all that thick love bombing then he goes out of town again. And even though you say to yourself, I'm not going to get, it's that, that hope monster creeps in. It creeps in. It creeps in. And I know everything I've learned. 
So I knew not to bite. I knew it, and I told him exactly what he was going through. I said, you know, you're having, you had a fight with somebody. Is that what's happening? You need a shot to your self-esteem. Oh, yeah, you had to hear me. But still way inside, it affects you, having them in front of you. And I don't know that that's a good thing. Because by last night, okay, so singing and crying to Gladys Knight. That song to me is very, very sad. Neither one of us. And, and, and even though it doesn't sound like it's about a narcissist, so to speak, but a lot of it is pertinent to how we are feeling at the end. You're just sad, and you know it's not going to ever work. And so there I am. And I realized that that feeling, we talked about chemicals a lot, that feeling is exactly what can be avoided if you don't break no contact. If you never broke, that feeling of singing Gladys Knight in your kitchen while crying wouldn't happen. You might have the other feeling of withdrawal. You're into a month, two months, three months. That's a different horrible feeling. But I would not have been in my kitchen crying to Gladys, singing Gladys Knight at the top of my lungs. Do you know what I mean? And for what? I managed to remain. But I, I listened. And that's all it took to make me sing Gladys Knight in the kitchen by myself. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. And no, I wasn't drunk. I gave up alcohol for Lent. Not that I'm a big drinker, so no. Oh, yeah. Gladys Knight. So please think about, I have more to say. This won't be the first video about this because I felt so much this week, but I wanted to tell you about it. And I have other videos probably lined up that'll have to do with the same topic. It was a fascinating week. Stay strong. Stay strong.